The next part of exam two's synthesis themed questions come from the understanding of reducing agents and how to turn carboxylic acid into its derivatives and back. So for the carboxylic acid derivatives part, I'm going to link in the doobly-doo below a, um, a chart that kind of shows all the back and forths of how you can turn a carboxylic acid into any of its derivatives and back again. But for now, I'm going to focus on the most common ones, which are the amide and the ester going back and forth between carboxylic acid. But before we get to that, let's talk about how do we even get a carboxylic acid from something like an OH. So the first thing to point out is what are we doing to, what is the technical term of going from one thing to the next? Well, as we move towards the carboxylic acid, we are becoming more oxidized. And all oxidized means is you have more carbon oxygen bonds or fewer hydrogen bonds. Notice I drew in these hydrogen, hydrogens in red. There are two here. You go one step further. Now there's one more oxygen bond in the form of the double bond, but one less hydrogen. And then the next further step, there are no hydrogens and three oxygen bonds altogether, two from the double bond and one from the OH. So if you can oxidize something, you will remove a hydrogen and replace it with an oxygen bond. Now, how do we go about doing this? Like, what steps do we have that can take us from OH to double bond O? If you watched my basics video, you remember that to oxidize an OH to a C double bond O, you use PCC. But PCC is only strong enough to take an OH to a carbonyl. It can't take it all the way to a carboxylic acid. What is strong enough to do that is Jones reagent, H2CrO4. And you will see that sometimes just written as J-O-N-E-S, Jones. And so that's strong enough to take an OH to a carboxylic acid. And if you start with an aldehyde, it will also work. So Jones would do this. But, it will not, but you cannot use PCC and turn this into a carboxylic acid. Going around the other way, how can we make something more reduced? Because the more, so first of all, if we're more reduced, we have fewer oxygen carbon bonds and we have more hydrogen bonds. So I went from three oxygen bonds, zero hydrogen bonds, to two oxygen bonds, one hydrogen bond, to one oxygen bond, three hydrogen bonds for the OH. So this is the most reduced you'll have with carboxylic acid and, and compared to OH. And how do we turn a carbonyl into an OH? If you saw the previous, one of the previous synthesis videos, we saw that the way you turn carbonyl into OH is with the use of NADH4. NADH4 is a weak reducing agent that basically does the opposite of what PCC does. It turns the carbonyl back into an OH. And what if we want to turn the carboxylic acid? Because NADH4 is not strong enough to react with carboxylic acid, well, what you use is LIALH4. That is a strong reducing agent that will turn everything and anything it touches into an OH, which means it will also work with carboxylic acid's derivatives. It will turn amides and esters, I don't know if this is nicely drawn, but it turns both of these guys also into OHs. So if this carbon right here is this carbon right here, or here, or here. Okay, so LiOH4 reduces carboxylic acid and its derivatives to an OH. Now, um, so if you take a carbonyl and want to turn it into an OH, yes, NADH4 will work, but you can also use LiAOH4 because again, it turns everything into OH if it can. Um, and anything else I want to say on that? I think that's it for the general reducing and oxidizing, oxidizing agents. But there's one more special one, dibal H. Dibal H is an important one to know because it's a way of making aldehydes. Now, the first thing to say about dibal H is a very, very important rule. Dibal H cannot react with carboxylic acid. Dibal H, if we write it out, looks like this: D-I-B-A-L-H. Now. What all this is, you don't really have to worry about. What you do care about is the fact that in comparison to NADH4 and LiAlH4, this only has one hydrogen. And if it only has one hydrogen, what can that hydrogen do? Well, when we are dealing with H-, yes, it is a reducing agent. It can attack carbonyls, make those swing up, and add the hydrogen here, so you become one less bond with the oxygen, one more bond with hydrogen. But before that, H- is a very, very strong base. And right here we have carboxylic acid, a good acid. 
that H minus almost instantly would grab that proton off the carboxylic acid, and since we only have one to spare, that's all that happens. So dibal H cannot turn carboxylic acid into, a car into an aldehyde, because if it only has one hydrogen to give, it can only give it to that acidic proton. Whereas LiLH4, because it has four, even if that hydrogen does get pulled off, you still have a bunch more hydrogens that can go about reducing the structure down the, down the way. So dibal H can't react with carboxylic acid, but it can react with its derivative. So I'm going to erase this arrow now, just so I have space. So what dibal H will do is it will convert these amides and the esters into an aldehyde. And basically anything that dimel H touches other than carboxylic acid will become an aldehyde. Now, there's one other thing I never talked about. How do I get carboxylic acid to become its derivatives? And again, I said I'll post a chart down there um, with a picture of the full chart. But let's go through the two most common reactions that convert amides to carboxylic acids and back, and esters to carboxylic acids and back. So if you want to turn a carboxylic acid into an, am, into an ester, what you're going to have over the arrow is H plus, and then whatever your OR group is, where it's HOR. So H, in this case I want it to be HOCH3, so it's going to, or I want it to be OCH3, so I'm going to have HOCH3. So it's just an OH group attached to the O, or it's just a hydrogen, uh, uh, it is just a hydrogen attached to the OR group that is the OR group of your ester. So it becomes, it goes from OH to OCH3. This hydrogen ends up getting removed through the mechanism, but we're not gonna go through that here. And now what if I wanna go in reverse? What if I want to turn the ester into the carboxylic acid? To do that, what you need over the arrow is step one, OH minus. Step two, H3O positive or H plus. It doesn't really matter if it's H3O positive or not, just H plus is enough. Now a point to make is, you could actually do this in one step. You could just do H3O positive, and that will yield the same thing. But more, much more commonly through exams, you're gonna see step one OH minus, step two H3O positive, and so you should always be thinking when you see that step, it must be converting something like this into a carboxylic acid. That's why I'm talking about both here. All right, so either just H2O positive or step one OH minus, step two H plus. Now what about the, the amide? How do I turn a carboxylic acid into an amide? Well, there are actually two routes to go about this, and I don't think I have enough room to draw it out here, so I'm gonna draw it down here. So we wanna turn a carboxylic acid into an amide. Now I wrote R2, R can be any number of hydrogens or carbon, so it could be NHCH3, or it could be Na, it could be NCH3, and then another CH3. It doesn't matter. What you what you can do is one of two things: either first react carboxylic acid with SOCl2, and what that does is it turns it into an acyl halide, or in this case an acyl chloride, a chlorine there, and then you can have the nitrogen group with its whatever R groups it has attached to it attack this carbon just by having N. R2, and then usually there's another hydrogen on it, just so it's neutral. The lone pairs would attack there, this would swing up, and chlorine being a great leaving group, when the oxygen reforms its double bond, it's kicked out, and so we get that. The other way of doing that is only one step, or the other way of doing this is only one step, and this is you put the HNR2 over the arrow, so the, the nitrogen with one extra hydrogen, so it's neutral, with its two R groups, be they hydrogens or carbons, and then you use DCC. You don't have to worry about the mechanism of DCC. All you need to know is that it basically kind of does this thing in, one, in the middle of the mechanism. It turns the OH into a good leaving group, and it makes this acidic proton not available so it doesn't get deprotonated by the nitrogen. So again, all DCC does is it makes that OH want to leave so the nitrogen can replace it. So these are two ways of turning a carboxylic acid into an amide. Now what about going backwards? Well, there's no way of turning an amide back into an acyl halide going this route, so there's only, one alter there's only one way to convert an amide back to a carboxylic acid. And that is, let's match this between. The way you turn an amide back into a carboxylic acid is the exact same thing we had over this arrow. 
either step one OH minus, step two H plus, or H3O positive. Personal preference to H3O positive because it's only one thing, but again, sometimes you're gonna see OH minus step one, H3O or H plus step two, and the result is the same. The nitrogen gets protonated, so it wants to leave the, or, well, Let's not talk about the mechanism here. But basically, the point is, this will drive the nitrogen to leave as, as a nitrogen positive, and an OH can replace it. So, step one, OH minus. Step two, H plus is another option. Or you can just use H3O positive, because it pretty much turns out that every carboxylic acid derivative you work with um, can become carboxylic acid through the use of H plus and H2O, which is the same thing as saying H3O positive. And so this is a handy chart to have on your note card for sure, because I'm sure at least one question will be, it'll be needed for.